tip number one is that we should think about pickleball mainly as a game about chasing the ball. Yes, of course it involves hitting the ball, but really you can't use your beautiful swing if you can't get to the ball. Instead, pickleball is a game about chasing, getting to the ball, setting up. If you're not there, oh, can't use that swing. Go out on the court, imagine you are a ball chaser, and that'll help you play better right away. It's really important to remember that the more space we have, the more time we have. That is, the farther away the person hitting the ball is from you, all things being equal, the more time you're going to have to set up for it. So whether you're talking about serving deep or returning deep, or even just playing good defense, the farther away you are from the other person, the more time it will take for that ball to travel. So keep this in mind when you're serving, when you're returning serve, or when you're just trying to play some great defense. It is really important to play pickleball with a certain mentality, a mentality that you are going to find a way to put one more ball in the court. And that's not always pretty. Sometimes you have to scrape and scratch, improvise a little bit, just find a way to get the ball in the court once more than your opponents. After all, that's how you win a rally, isn't it? We can call this pressuring your opponents with consistency. Imagine if you were that player or you were that team that your opponents always thought, you know what, they never miss. They always get one more ball back in the court. Even when we think we've hit a winner, somehow they find a way to get that ball back in play. And while this does involve, certainly, physical skills and athletic ability, it is also very much about an attitude. So if you can step on the court and you have the attitude that you are going to find a way to get every ball back in the court, you're going to be well prepared to put that kind of pressure on your opponents by being steady. And yes, it's true, you can work on your physical skills so that they match that mentality, but it always starts with the mindset. Find a way to put one more ball in the court. The more trouble that you're in, the less swing you should take. And this is a mistake that sometimes intermediate players make, certainly beginning players, is that sometimes when we're in trouble, when we're chasing a ball, when it's far away from us, we sometimes flail at the ball. But remember, the more trouble you're in, the harder it's going to be to hit the ball cleanly in the center of your paddle. So take less swing and make the quality of the contact better. It's true that pickleball involves hitting drops on the third shot and other times as well. But remember, a drop is a risky shot. Hit that ball a little bit too high and your opponents get to smash it. Hit the ball a little too low or a little too slow and it's in the net. And so it's really important that we have on the table another option, especially for those third shots. And that other option is the third shot drive, a low and fast ball. Now why would you play a drive? Well, there's a few good reasons. One of them is just the consistency reason. Most people will find it easier to play that fast ball low over the net rather than that slow drop that has to be perfect. But there's another good reason to play drive too, and that is an offensive reason. That when you hit hard, you're giving your opponents less time to set up, less time to prepare. And that's generally a good thing. People like to have more time to set up. So my suggestion to you is that you start by hitting drives. Hit those low fastballs to your opponents and see how they handle them. It's important, of course, that you can go out and practice so that you can control the height of your drive so it stays low, preferably less than one paddle height over the net. Test out with your opponents and see if they can handle it. And if they can't, you've got a winning strategy. It's also important to be able to play drops, these low and slow balls that are designed to force your opponents to hit up on the ball. If they have to hit up, they can't hit that hard and still keep the ball in play. And this might give you a chance to start to move forward toward the net and be able to apply some pressure yourself. It's really important you go out with practice partners and you work on hitting those drops. They don't necessarily have to bounce and they don't have to land in the kitchen, but it is important that they force an upward hit from your opponent. When it comes to pickleball strategy, keeping the ball low is the name of the game. And this is true whether we're talking about third shots, or we're talking about four shots, we're talking about our volleys, we're talking about our dinks or our drops. We need to keep that ball low. We need to force our opponents to hit up as much as possible. If we give our opponents high balls, they're able to hit on a downward trajectory. And if they can hit down, they can hit hard. So whether we're up near the net or we're in the backcourt, learning to keep that ball low over the net, one paddle height or so, is a really important strategy. The height of your shot is controlled by a few factors, including the angle of the paddle at the moment of contact, the swing path, and the speed of the ball. Remember, if you're playing a drop, that ball is likely going to have to have some kind of an arc. 
the question is, how big will that arc be? And if you give the ball more speed, it's going to be a bigger arc. Less speed, it'll be smaller and tighter to the net. When your opponents fail to keep the ball low, this is the green light for you. This is your chance to hit hard. Remember, when you receive a ball that's net high or above, you can start to hit on a bit of a downward trajectory. And if you can hit downward into the court, then you can hit the ball fast and still keep it in play. So when you're up at the net and you're getting that high ball, think of this as your opportunity to swing freely, to hit hard, to steal time from your opponents. And it may not win you the point outright, but if you can hit fastballs, it's more likely your opponents are going to struggle and give you something else you can pounce on. When you're hitting slow balls, whether it's a dink or a drop, you should consider hitting cross court. When you watch advanced players, you'll see most of their slow shots go on the diagonal. There's a few reasons for this. One is that when you hit cross court, you're hitting over the lower part of the net. And if you're hitting over the lower part of the net, well, it makes your shot a whole lot easier. The second reason to hit cross court is that it moves your opponents more. Because the ball lands and then rebounds on the same trajectory it was sent, it's more likely to make them move. And if people are moving when they hit, they're less likely to be successful. And finally, when you hit cross court, you've got more room to work with, making it more likely that you force your opponents to hit up. Pickleball is a game and games should be fun. So when you're out there and playing, make sure that you're having a great time. If you're not having fun on the court, well, maybe it's time to take a break. Maybe it's time to step away for a couple days until you're really hungry to come back out there. Of course, pickleball games, especially if you're a competitive player, can sometimes get intense, and that's all right. But we need to make sure that that intensity doesn't become so overwhelming that we're not enjoying playing pickleball. So my suggestion to you is keep an eye on your fun factor. If it continues to be fun and you're having a great time, perfect. And if it's not, well, maybe take a little bit of a break, go do something else, and come back when you're ready.